right? Welcome to worship this morning. Wow, I'm really loud. <laughs> um, this morning, as uh, you may be aware, is Mother's Day, and so we will have a, a litany towards the middle of the service for our mothers uh, during the community prayers. Also this morning, we are still recognizing the anniversary of baptism, so following the hymn, I invite all the families of those who are uh, having an, a baptism anniversary um, you would have received a letter in the last month if it's that time. I believe there's an insert that has the list of everyone whose anniversary it is. And so I invite you to come forward for the anniversary of baptism time. And we'll just gather right up around the baptismal font. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come together today to worship and praise you. We come in service, service to you and to answer your calling. May we listen to that which is calling from within us. And may you call out our strengths, our gifts, and your will for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us sing. Please stand.
When God claimed these beloved young people in holy baptism, we made sacred promises. Parents promised to faithfully bring... Go ahead, parents. <laughs> to faithfully bring our children to worship, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Sponsors, godparents, and this congregation promise. Today we keep and renew our promises. You may dip a hand into the baptismal font and make a sign of the cross on your child's body and the following litany. Go ahead. That you may hear good, the good news of Christ, the word of life. Receive the sign of cross on your ears. that you may see the light of Christ illumining your way. Receive the sign of the cross on your eyes. That you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips. that God may dwell within you by faith. Receive the sign of the cross on your heart. That you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ in serving. Receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders. That God's mercy may be known in your works. Receive the sign of the cross on your hands. That you may follow in the way of Christ. Receive the sign of the cross on your feet. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. And invite you to either, if you brought your baptismal candles, to light them or um, get some help from your parents lighting them or one of the extra candles we have here. And invite the congregation to please stand as we will continue by responding to the questions of faith by stating our creed. <coughs> so as we let our lights shine, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may you place a hand on the head of shoulder of those celebrating their anniversary today and let us pray this blessing. Gracious God, we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. 
Especially we ask you to bless each of these young people on the anniversary of their baptism. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us to be your own, and by the power and name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By the Spirit, transform us in your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Take this time to share the peace with one another, and you may be seated. And let us pray the prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love that, for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the anthem.
first lesson is from Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. One thing that I love about my mother is that it doesn't matter if I call her at 6.30 in the morning to say that I have a child throwing up. She says, just bring them on over so that I can go to work. I love my mom because she gives me lo lots of chances to fix it. I love my mama because she's so sweet. my mom because she takes care of me. I love my mom because she takes care of me. I love my mom because she takes care of me. I love my mom because she's nice. I love my mom because she gives us shelter. I love my mom because she's just amazing all the way around. Psalms 13 through 16. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, you saw, your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained before for me were written in your book before one of them came to be.
The second lesson is from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Write these things to you and who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and that they have believed that you sent me. I am asking you on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name and that you have given me, so that I may be one, that we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. This time we'll have a time for children's message. morning. Good job singing this morning and leading us. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to say some things, and I want you to tell me what the next thing is. So it'll be like in a certain order. You might, you might figure it out. So one, two, three. What's next? Four. Right. Okay, here's another. A, B, C, D, E. Good. Okay. Here's another one. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's today. Yeah. Well, there's a fancy word for what that is. It's called uh, a sequence. Okay. So that when you say something and and it comes in a certain order and there's a next thing that comes after the next thing, that's called a a sequence. It's lots of sequences in the world and in life and. In our scripture today, Jesus 
prays for his disciples, and in his prayer, we hear a sequence, an, an order to things. Because this is how the sequence in Jesus' prayer goes. First step, he prays, God gives words to Jesus. Okay, and then the second step is, Jesus gives those words to his disciples. And then the third step is, the disciples give those words to other people. So it goes, God, to Jesus, to the disciples, to everyone else to us, because those disciples did that third step pretty good. See, they shared what Jesus told them, that God told Jesus to their disciples, who told their disciples, who told their disciples, who told their disciples, who eventually your parents heard, and then they told you, and you can also learn that from the other people here in the community of Messiah, we're all living out that sequence that Jesus prayed that day, which is kind of cool. So let's try this like we did at the beginning. So the, the, the order goes, God, Jesus, disciples, me, yeah, us, us, exactly. So we're invited to be part of that prayer and that sequence and share the good news of God with others and um, carry it on. So let's pray. And it's a repeat after me. Okay? Dear God, thank you for Jesus who received your words and shared them with his disciples who shared them with other disciples until we received them. Help us to share those words, too. Those words too. Amen. Amen. Thanks. My message today is taken from Acts 1. So if you want to read along in uh, the bulletin inserts and in what that reading is to refresh your memory. Acts 1 is uh, Luke continuing the story, right? So the Gospel of Luke was written, the story of Jesus, and then Acts is the Acts of the Apostles. So it's uh, book 2 in Luke's series of books. And what's happened in this first chapter, a little background, is that um, Judas, one of the original 12 disciples, has betrayed and uh, died. And Jesus has risen from the dead, and then he's come to stay with the disciples, and all the disciples, men and women, the whole large group, not just the 12 that we think of, or the 11, as is the case at this point, stays with them for 40 days, sharing many convincing truths um, and proofs that he really is alive, that he's real, that death could not hold him and bind him. And then, after those 40 days, Luke tells us that uh, Jesus ascends to heaven, the ascension, which the day of ascension this year was on the 10th. Um, because 10 days later, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples on Pentecost, 50 days after uh, the Passover. And Jesus had told his disciples at his ascension, you will receive power when this Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And Jesus commands those disciples to go to Jerusalem, to stay together, and to wait. And so here you have this uh, group of followers, and they're meeting in this upper room, as Jesus had instructed them, and they're waiting. They're, they're staying and waiting for what God the Father has promised 
namely the Holy Spirit, and that's certainly something worth waiting for and, and, and valuable, but you know, how long, Lord? Because we don't like to wait, especially in times of transition. We don't like to not know what's really coming or when or how or what that's going to look like, and it tends to intensify our, our um, frustrations and irritations with each other. And, and so this is going on in this room with this group of people. And on top of all that, Jesus had really stressed them out. I mean, Jesus had strained their hopes that the, his resurrection from the dead, it might inaugurate the restoration of Israel. They were very focused on that. And, and Jesus says, you know, it's not really any of your business to know when the kingdom of God is coming. And so their ethnic hopes that they had hung on Jesus and then were dashed at the cross and then now were lifted up with the resurrection are basically put on hold as well. I mean, they're just told, not yet. So there's a marker of crisis occurring in this community. Things had not turned out the way that they had hoped they would. On top of all of that, they had a transition and leadership occurring. Does this not sound like an interim congregation or what? I mean, come on. <laughs> They had all these transitions going on in their community. One of the 12 had gone dramatically astray. He had betrayed them. So this community is, de is dealing with the, the aftermath of a betrayal of trust. And so they're experiencing probably what every community that experiences a betrayal of trust in any of their leadership would feel anger and grief and confusion and loss of confidence in one's judgment and enduring suspicion and how reliable people are. So that's what's going on in this room. It's pretty connectable, isn't it? This is, this is uh, relevant stuff, the Bible. Now, in the midst of all of this, you have our 11 disciples. Among them is Peter, who valued order and preparing for the future and liked to get things done and make decisions and, and you know, do something. Peter didn't like to wait a lot. So Peter steps up and he reminds all those who are gathered that they had a gap to fill they needed to add an apostle and bring back the number to 12, which would reflect the 12 tribes of Israel. And that the candidates were required to not only be followers of Jesus, but that they had been with Jesus from the very beginning of his uh, public ministry to his ascension. So they developed some qualifiers as to who would be an appropriate candidate. So amid the 120 that are gathered there, two candidates are chosen. Verse 23 kind of always sets me up to think that the one they're going to pick is, is um, Joseph called Barsabbas called Justice and not Matthias. Uh, because he seems to be the one that's better known, he certainly has a variety of nicknames, and the other 11 disciples were known for having a variety of nicknames, and so it seems like he fit right into the group. But they both were qualified, uh, passionate, they knew God's purpose in their lives. It was to share the story of Jesus and how it made a difference in their lives and in the lives of all who Jesus' story would touch. And so, with prayers for God's will to be done, for the great heart knower to reveal who was to be uh, selected to replace Judas, they took Justice and Matthias' names and carved them in stone, placed them in a container, and then shook them until a stone fell out. That's how they chose. 
Is that how we should pick the next pastor? <laughs> <Should we just laughs> put him in a name and shake it and see who comes out. The lot fell on Matthias. Well, not much is known about Matthias. There's speculations. Um, I think possibly he was a missionary to Ethiopia, but he also may have been an uh, apostle and witness in Jerusalem. We, we don't really know. Nothing is ever really said about Matthias again. Likewise, we don't know much about justice. He'd been there from the beginning. With all those nicknames, he was probably a pretty likable fellow. Anyone with his passion and devotion probably longed to be in the inner circle, but the lot was cast against him. Imagine being the one God didn't choose. Have you ever been in that place where you worked really hard and, and you, you didn't get what you thought you deserved? Right? You did all the right things. You followed the rules. You, you did the work. But you didn't quite get what you thought you deserved, the recognition, the reward. Your company lays off five people, and you just happen to be one of the five. There really isn't any fault or, or reason. It just happened. Or you interview for a job, you make it up to the top two, and you're the one who's not chosen. With all the preparation and the high hopes, there is a disappointment that's felt. It's heartbreaking. Justice probably had that very human response, this disappointment, because, well, Look at his name, Justice. He's just us. Just us, all of us, who thought maybe we were on the right track, the right path, only to find everything change and, and now wonder, well, what's up with that? Now what? And he could have felt hurt or become critical or cynical. He could have let his pride hold him back, hold it against others, blame the machine or the whoever. But he didn't. And I think that because, well, we never do hear another word about justice, and Luke liked to lift up when disciples made mistakes and had flaws, and since he's never mentioned again, I'm guessing he didn't behave badly. I'm guessing that Matthias, he probably gave Matthias a big hug and said, I'll support you every way, brother. I think Justice knew who he was, what God placed in his heart, with or without a title, whether he was in the inner circle of 12 or not. Justice would have been a disciple of Jesus Christ and witness to the life-changing message and life story that he had to tell one way or another. And I thought about that this week when I happened to be watching American Idol. They did a whole thing on Prince, and I love Prince, so, you know, I'm from Minnesota. Come on, gotta love Prince. So I'm watching American Idol, and I thought about how, you know, when the show usually begins, or any of those talent shows, there's the auditions, and, and you've got these folks that have big dreams, or maybe a little misdirected. Maybe they just don't quite have the talent to meet their dreams. And it's disappointing. It's, it's heartbreaking to watch some because you really want them to have that talent because they have the heart. It's just not there. And then by the end of the season, you know, it's, it's, it's come down to a few, few people and it is clear that these are musicians and entertainers. Whether they win or not, whether they get the title or not, it doesn't matter. They will always be musicians and entertainers because it is who they are. It is the path that their life is meant to take. Discerning our path in life 
sometimes isn't so clear. We use the best decision-making process possible. We know that um, when we're discerning the purpose of our life and why we're here, that often it's only in retrospect that we can see how God was working through those disappointments, through the, the turns in the road and the now what moments. In Acts 1.24, the disciples pray, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, cardionostis, the great heart knower, they, they pray to God, You know the hearts of all. Please reveal your will to us. We all want to know what God's will is for our lives, for the purpose But it's not, there's no real formula for knowing. The disciples tried casting lots and leaving it to fate. As I was researching and trying to understand, well, is there a formula? Is there some piece of uh, gold I could share with you, some golden wisdom? Uh, the best I could come up with was, uh, from Professor Richard Jensen. He uh, wrote three, three criteria for knowing um, God's will in reading this story from Max. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's the best I could do. First, we know we are called to love God and to love our neighbor. So when faced with a choice about our purpose and God's will, Ask yourself how you are loving God and your neighbor by doing this. How is this loving God? How is this loving your neighbor? I think that's a good criteria to use. A second one is that we know um, we live our lives under the canopy of God's forgiving love. So we can pray and pray for God's will to be revealed to us preferably in specifics, and it's not revealed in specifics. So sometimes we will stumble along, we will cast lots, and we will hope that what we do with our lives pleases God. Martin Luther advised that we will have to choose boldly our path. Choose boldly your path. We don't often know for certain which is the right path. We choose, knowing that God's forgiving love will sustain us in the midst of lives and our lives' many decisions. So that's basically what Jensen and Luther are saying in their second criteria is, choose boldly a path and know that God's forgiving love will sustain you wherever that path leads you. So here's the third one. We know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Our bad decisions will not separate us from the love of God. And that God will work through whatever decisions we make to make the best of them. For Jesus came, his great mission statement is that I came that they may have life and they may have life everlasting. God is a God who always works towards life. So even when we make those decisions that are not life-geared, in our prayers for the will of God to be done in those decisions, God will gear them toward life in some way. So we choose. We decide. We act. And we trust. Now here's another thing about this story from Acts. I discover there was an ongoing argument uh, that's, that's gone on for years among scholars so, as to whether the disciples really made the right choice in their decision-making process, seeking that 12th disciple. For some say that the disciples chose Matthias, but God chose Paul. That maybe they jumped the gun a bit. always quick to propose some action 
Peter reasons that scripture and the, the drama of Judas's actions were a fulfillment of scripture. And you heard that in a couple of the readings this morning. So that's been a, been a saying throughout that that was a fulfillment of scripture. And therefore, the fulfillment of scripture is that, you know, the 11 should be made 12 again. And, and that uh, we need to fill this gap. Well, prior to the Holy Spirit coming to the community, the community was very self-focused, right? And they were radically keeping to their own. They were circling the wagons, you could say. When the Holy Spirit came upon them on Pentecost, it shifted their focus. And it revealed to them that Jesus had a vision that was much greater than theirs and then they could see in their circled wagons an inward focus because God was concerned with the restoration of all creation, not just Israel. So even though Matthias is chosen by the apostles from the casting of lots, it's possible that the Spirit elected Paul to fill that apostleship left vacant by Judas. The criteria established by Peter and the other apostles in their consent may not have had the Spirit's consent, namely that uh, this be the candidate be a witness of Jesus' ministry from the beginning right up to his ascension. For if we say the Spirit chose Paul to be the twelfth apostle, He obviously did not fit that criteria. Sometimes the Spirit chooses outside what we think is the criteria of leadership. So that's maybe why we don't hear the word about Matthias again, because he's just not Paul. The disciples did the best they could in discerning God's will, just as we do. We choose, we decide, we act, we trust. But let us also listen and reflect on what the Spirit is guiding. So in all we do, choose boldly. Whether you know if this is the Spirit's guidance in that moment or not, know that God's forgiving love will sustain you in the midst of your messy lives and your many decisions. For nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is at work in the midst of all of our decisions. Amen.
Lord, on this day set aside to honor and remember mothers, we give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life from your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made in carrying us and giving us birth. We thank you for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood, whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else. We thank you for those women who held us and fed us, who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our moms. We pray for older moms whose children are grown. Grant them joy and satisfaction for a job well done. We pray for new moms experiencing changes they could not predict. Grant them rest and peace as they trust you for the future. We pray for pregnant women who will soon be moms. Grant them patience and good counsel in the coming months. We pray for moms who face the demands of single parenthood. Grant them strength and wisdom. We pray for moms who enjoy financial abundance. Grant them time to share with their families. We pray for moms who are raising their children in poverty. Grant them relief. We pray for stepmoms. Grant them patience and understanding. We pray for moms who are separated from their children. We pray for moms in marriages that are in crisis. Grant them support and insight. We pray for moms who have lost children. Grant them comfort in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray for moms who gave up their children for adoption. Grant them peace and confidence as they trust in your providence. We pray for adoptive mothers. Grant them joy and gratitude for the gift you have provided. We pray for girls and women who think about being moms. Grant them wisdom and discernment. We pray for all women who have assumed the mother's role in a child's life. Grant them joy and appreciation of others. We pray for those present who are grieving the loss of their mother in the past year. Grant them comfort and hope in Christ's resurrection. You may be seated for the offering, and we'll have special music by O.J. Walkers.
Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who enthroned forever at your right hand intercedes for us as our great high priest. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. We will commune by intinction. There will be two standing stations, one on this side, one about right there. There will be gluten-free elements available on a stand. That will be nearest me. You if you need a gluten-free element, you just uh, chew, pick the bread and dip it in the uh, wine yourself. I will say the words over them as you are doing this. Come, let us eat.
I invite you to stand and receive the blessing, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Announcements are found in your messenger. Uh, please note that there's a summer Sunday schedule change. So we still have worship on Saturday at 5.30. It's not a weekend summer schedule change. It's only Sunday summer schedule change. So Saturday night, 5.30, same as always been, 5.30, Saturday night. Sunday morning, 9.30, one service. First, third, and fifth Sundays will be classic or this 8.30 version of worship. Second and fourth Sundays will be blended or the 11 o'clock version of worship. So odd Sundays, first, third, fifth. Not the dates, first, third, and fifth, but the first Sunday, third Sunday, fifth Sunday will be classic. Second and fourth Sundays of the month will be blended. One exception, Memorial Day weekend, the 27th is the fourth Sunday, but it's the classic service, so, okay. Didn't quite follow it perfectly, but almost worked out. Um, also, looks like you have an announcement about open house, so I'll let you talk next. Hi, I'm Colleen Prosser. I just wanted to catch everybody up with the Safe to Sleep House, the Messiah Transition House. It's open today. The renters moved out a little over a week ago, and uh, we've begun the repairs. So if you'd like to go over, it will be open. Uh, I opened it up at 8 o'clock this morning. It'll be open until 1230 or 1 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, there's a list of repairs that need to be taken care of. If anybody's handy, we sure could use some help. And uh, we've started taking some of the donations. If you can hold on to them, we'd appreciate it until the house is all ready. If not, we have the storage house clean, uh, thanks to some great guys that uh, clean the garage and the storage house out so we can put things in there. And I just wanted to let you know that we all appreciate all the help, all the donations, your organizational skills, just everything that everybody has done. We've had some, some great help so far, and we're just really looking forward to having more help and getting this started. Thanks. Okay, there's, yes, go ahead. <laughs> It's the time of year for us to start thinking about Vacation Bible School. It will start June 17th, which is the evening of Father's Day. We'll go through Thursday night. That way, people that want to get out of town for the weekend, we'll have their Friday open. We are having an organizational meeting tomorrow at 5 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. I emailed some of you who have helped in the past. Please feel free to join us. Um, we'll be setting leadership roles and discussing some things that we want to happen. Um, there is, in the spirit, there's a link where you can volunteer or sign up children. 
It's also going to be in the Greater Springfield Kids Directory, and I will be getting it in the news leader as soon as um, they start doing that. So please feel free to join us. Um, next Sunday, May 20th, we'll recognize during this worship service uh, Sarah Coleman, who uh, is, uh, has resigned and is moving on um, out of state. So <laughs> uh, we will be saying uh, goodbye to her and Godspeed. And then also at 11 o'clock is the confirmation worship service. So uh, that's next Sunday, which is the last Sunday of two services on a Sunday. The next one is Memorial Day weekend, and we'll start with the one service. Finally, uh, the Cleveland family is moving away as also from our state, and so we would like to take this time to say a um, farewell to them. If you want to come forward, where are you? There you are. All right. So the church is a family. It's united by a common recognition of Jesus Christ as our Savior, that we are all brothers and sisters, and for a time, Messiah has been your home. Like every human family, our church family is formed and reformed over time. Members are born and they die, and members are adopted into our family and as they leave our congregation for a new home in a different place. So, for a time, the Clevelands have lived here with us. We have shared with each other good times and bad. We have shared each other's joys and sorrows. We have lightened each other's heavy loads. And together we have laughed and cried. Together we have worshipped and praised God. Together we have lived and so, as a congregation, we feel sorry in your leaving, yet we rejoice with you in anticipation of this new phase of your life. We will miss your love and support, yet we know you will add much to the lives of those who you will be with in your new church family, as you have added much to our lives. We will pray for you and for those, your whole family in God's love. So let us pray. O oh God, you are the strength and protector of your people. We humbly place your hands on the Cleveland family who are about to leave us. Keep and preserve them, O oh Lord, in all health and safety, both in body and mind and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So go in the peace of Christ and our prayers go with you. Amen. Please stand. May God who has brought us from death to life fill you with great joy and love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, grab resources for learning disease, offer healing and care to all the need. Alleluia! Christ is risen! You are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news.